Hi boys and girls, we are on chapter 49 of the Ichabog today, and the title is Escape from Ma Grunters. Children generally stayed at Ma Grunter's orphanage until she threw them out onto the street. She received no gold for looking after grown men and women, and had always allowed had only allowed Basher John to stay because he was useful to her. While they were still worth gold, Ma Grunter made sure no children escaped by keeping all doors securely locked and bolted. Only Basher John had keys, and the last boy who tried to steal them had spent months recovering from his injuries. Daisy and Martha both knew the time was coming when they'd be thrown out, but they were less likely they were less worried for themselves and for what would become of the little ones once they were all gone. Bert and Roderick knew they'd have to leave around the same time, if not sooner. They weren't able to check and see whether wanted posters with Bert's face on them were still stuck to the walls of Jeroboam, but it seemed unlikely they'd been taken down. The four lived in daily dread that Ma Grunter and Basher John would realize they had a valuable fugitive worth 100 gold ducats living under their roof. In the meantime, Bert, Daisy, Martha, and Roderick met every night while the other children were asleep to share their stories and pool their knowledge about what was going on in Cornucopia. They held these meetings in the one place Basher John never went. The large cabbage cupboard in the kitchen. Roderick, who had been raised to make jokes about the marshlanders, laughed at Martha's accent during the first of these meetings. But Daisy told him... Ah... Uh, Daisy told him to stop so fiercely that he didn't do it again. Huddled around a single candle as though it were a fire amid mounds of tough, smelly cabbages, Daisy told the boys about her kidnap. Bert shared his fear that his father had died in some kind of an accident, and Roderick explained that the way explained about the way that dark footers faked attacks on towns to keep people believing in the Ichabog. He also told the others about how the mail was intercepted, how the two lords were stealing wagon loads of gold from the country, and that hundreds of people had been killed, or if they were useful to Spittleworth in some way, imprisoned. <coughs> However, each of the boys were hiding something, and I'll tell you what it was. Roderick suspected Mrs. that Mr. Beamish had been accidentally shot on the marsh all those years ago, but he hadn't told Bert that because he was scared his friend would blame him for not telling him sooner. Meanwhile, Bert, who was certain Mr. Dovetail had carved the giant feet the dark footers were using, didn't tell Daisy so. You see, he was certain Mr. Dovetail must have been killed after making them, and he didn't want to give Daisy false hope that he was still alive. As Roderick didn't know who'd carved that many sets of feet used by the dark footers, Daisy had no idea about her father's part in the attacks. But what about the soldiers? Daisy asked Roderick. The Ichabod Defense Brigade and the Royal Guard, are they in on it? I think they must be a bit, said Roderick, but only the very top people know everything. The two lords and my... Whoever's replaced my father, he fell silent for a while. The soldiers must know there is no Ichabod, said Burr, after all they've been... After all the time they've spent up in the marshlands. There is an Ichabod, though, said Martha. Roderick didn't laugh, though he might have done it if he'd just met her. Daisy ignored Martha, as she usually did, but Bert said kindly, I believed it myself until I realized what was really going on. The foursome went off to bed that night, agreeing to meet again the following evening. Each was burning with ambition to save the country, but they kept coming back to the fact that without weapons, they could hardly fight Spittleworth and his many soldiers. However, when the girls arrived in the cabbage cupboard on the seventh night, Bert knew from their expressions that something had something bad had happened. Trouble, whispered Daisy as soon as Martha had closed the cupboard door. We heard Ma Grunter and Basher John talking just before we went to bed. There's an orphanage inspector on the way. He'll be here tomorrow afternoon. The boys looked at each other extremely worried. The last thing they wanted was for an outsider to recognize them as two fugitives. We have to leave, said Bert to Roderick. Now, tonight... Together, we can manage to get the keys from Basher John. I'm game, said Roderick, clenching his fists. Well, Martha and I are coming with you, said Daisy. We've thought of a plan. What plan, said Bert? I say the four of us head north to the soldiers' camp in the marshlands, said Daisy. Martha knows the way, so she can guide us. When we get there, we will tell the soldiers everything Roderick's told us about the Ichabog being fake, 
It's real, though, said Martha, but the other three ignored her. And about all the killings and all the gold Spittleworth and Flapoon are stealing from the country. We can't take on Spittleworth alone. There must be some good soldiers who'd stop obeying him and help us take the country back. It's a good plan, said Bert slowly, but I don't think you girls should come. It might be dangerous. Roderick and I will do it. No, Bert, said Daisy, her eyes almost feverish. With four of us, we double the number of soldiers we can talk to. Please don't argue. Unless something changes, soon most of the children in this orphanage will be in that cemetery before the winter's over. It took a little more argument for Bert to agree that the two girls should come, because he privately worried that Daisy and Martha were too frail to make the journey. But at last he agreed. All right, you'd better grab your blankets off your beds because it's going to be a long, cold walk. Roddy and I will deal with Basher John. So Bert and Roderick sneaked into Basher John's room. The fight was short and brutal. It was lucky Ma Grunter was well asleep because otherwise all the banging and shouting would definitely have woken her. Leaving Basher John bloody and bruised, Roderick stole his boots. Then they locked him in his own room and the two boys sprinted sprinted to join the girls who were waiting beside the front door. It took five long minutes to unfasten all the padlocks and loosen all the chains. A blast of icy air met them as they opened the door. With one glance back at the orphanage, threadbare blankets around their shoulders, Daisy, Bert, Martha, and Roderick slipped out onto the street and set off for the marshlands through the first few flakes of snow. That's the end of chapter 49. Tomorrow will be... Chapter 50, A Winter's Journey. See you next time.